Namaste. So now, if you've been following this series, you have in your possession the knowledge that you need to attain moksha. What could possibly go wrong? Um, a lot, like everything. You see, when you realize that aham brahmasmi, shivo hum, and you take initiative to control your karma, basically you control maya, the creation of the material world, the illusion, you can really screw things up if you don't know what you're doing. With great power comes great responsibility. And that means if you use this or misuse this power to hurt someone, including yourself, the karmic consequences are very significant. That's why mystical powers are considered a great danger and a distraction on the spiritual path. And my advice is always, if you meet someone who offers you mystical powers, like run the other way. Get away from them as soon as you can. They're bad association. They will mislead you. And the trap is that mystical powers or any kind of yogic powers or, or really anything like money or worldly power or fame or anything like that offers immediate enjoyment. Huh? But then the bill comes at the end of the month <laughs> and it's not pleasant. You know, this is called preas, immediate enjoyment and long-term suffering. Whereas shreyas means I take some trouble now. I accept some difficulty now. And in the future I enjoy without any penalty. See, this is what Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita as happiness in the mode of goodness. He says it's like poison in the beginning and nectar at the end. Whereas happiness in the mode of passion is like nectar in the beginning and poison in the end. Because you have to pay the karmic price. And it's not pleasant. You know, it's like shopping with a credit card. <laughs> so, don't make this mistake. Don't get overconfident. You know, like that movie, uh, the video, The Secret, where they tell you, well, basically you're God, so you can do any damn thing you want. Oh, really? If you actually realized Brahman, you're not going to do anything because Brahman has no activities, no qualities, no consciousness even. Brahman has infinite awareness, but only of itself. It's completely unconditioned. It has no manifestation. So the idea that, okay, I'm God, so I can do in this body whatever I like, is completely wrong. The body and the mind are the home of karma. They're the address where the bill gets mailed. So, yeah, maybe you can take a little power and do something that you really enjoy, but then you have to pay for it. So when you step back and, and take a look at this, it's like, well, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to obligate myself and mortgage my future? happiness against some temporary enjoyment now? That's stupid. 
<laughs> I'm not going to fall for that one. No, thank you. So that means when you realize Brahman, or even when you just begin this meditation that leads to Brahman realization, it doesn't really change anything. Not right away. Right now, what you need to be doing is staying on the path, staying uh, true to your values, your spiritual values, and your austerities and sadhana. And what is that? Well, there are four aspects to genuine sadhana. These are called sadhana chatushtaya. The first is viveka, discrimination of the real from the unreal. Then there's vairagya, no attachment or re renunciation. The shad sampa, the six virtues, and I'll discuss those in a minute. And finally, mumukshutva. Mumukshutva means the strong desire for liberation. That, that liberation should be the only desire, or at least it should be the strongest desire, the dominant desire in your mind. And that any other desires are simply incidental. Like, well, I need some food, I need some sleep, I need a place to live, you know. And indulged in only to the minimum necessary to maintain your life, to maintain your sadhana. You need some money. Otherwise, how are you going to eat? Where are you going to stay? How are you going to perform worship and stuff like that? But these are incidental. These should not become the overall driving force in your life. That should be liberation. So now, the six qualities that a sadhaka must have to stay on the path and stay out of trouble they're called the six virtues or treasures. Sama means calmness, evenness of mind. Dhamma means discipline of the senses. Uparati means satiety, withdrawal of the senses. Titiksha means tolerance or forbearance. Shraddha means faith in God and Guru. And finally, samadhan means focus, going deep into the sadhana, sticking to only holy topics. Like, you don't watch TV, you don't read the news, you don't go online and watch YouTube videos, huh? except for mine, of course, <laughs> or similar videos. You stay on the topic of self-realization. Why is this? Because now you have power. Now you can shape your experience. You can even shape the world around you. If you know that you're Brahman, if you know that you're Shiva, Maya is going to listen to you, is going to pay attention to you. And so if you start filling up your mind with junk, like TV news or violent videos or any kind of nonsense, novels or porn or whatever. This is going to reflect in your experience of the world around you. You're going to project what's on your mind on the world, on Maya, and Maya is going to respond. Oh, you're Shiva? You're Brahman? Oh, sure, I'll give you whatever illusion you want. Whatever dream makes you happy. So, it's like, be careful what you wish for, because you will get it. So, the best thing is to keep the mind clean. How do you do that? By mantra japa, chanting your mantra from the moment you wake up in the morning to, to when you go to sleep at night. Studying the Shastra 
and helping others study the Shastra is even better. Why do you think I do these videos? <laughs> I don't need to do these videos, but it helps me keep my mind clean on the topic. I've got all these technical skills and musical skills and writing skills, so I use them in spiritual service. Well, whatever skill you've got, maybe it's different from mine, but you can use it in the service of self-realization, and that keeps you clean, that keeps you free. That keeps you a positive force for spiritual enlightenment in the world. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you form an organization or start a religion or anything like that. That's going overboard. But at least in your own life, you can influence the people around you by your example, that you're always engaged in spiritual topics. And if they don't get the hint, gently remind them why you're doing these things and what is the result and show by example that it makes you happy because you know watching youtube is not going to make you happy what's going to make you happy is self-realization so put in the time meditate chant study do puja and so many of the other things that are mentioned in the scriptures and you'll get happy. Or at least if unhappiness comes, you'll be able to tolerate it much better with detachment, knowing that well, this will soon be over. This is not going to be forever because everything in this world is temporary. So this is the life of the sadhu, harmlessness, blamelessness, a positive influence on everyone around them, and piousness, worship of God, showing by example how to be a good person, charity, helpfulness. I mean, these are all the virtues that a self-realized person should display, not selfishness, huh? not attachment, but rather complete freedom from all these material things and the ability to inspire others with the happiness of self-realization because that's the real benefit of enlightenment, that one becomes free from suffering and when the suffering is removed, our natural happiness can shine forth. Huh? This is how enlightenment should be. It shouldn't be dry or serious. If you find your sadhana is becoming a grind, if it feels like a duty, like a job, something is wrong. You've lost the thread. You've lost the juice. Somehow or other, you have to get plugged in again. You have to make a breakthrough, a revolution. So that's what we're advocating here. That you go to the root of the purpose of self-realization. Now that doesn't mean that you stop doing any of the processes, no. In fact, it should make you more enthusiastic to do the sadhana. Because that's really what leads to complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namo Shivaya.